Hopefully everyone is here for uh, for the right webinar. The one today is on uh, on OKRs and specifically it's uh, how CEOs use OKRs to grow companies. And uh, we're going to cover a lot of great stuff. And uh, see more folks are trickling in. We'll, we'll let them do that. So um, just a couple of high level things in our agenda. So first of all, we'll cover what are OKRs. Very important uh, to uh, to define that for folks who are new to this, uh, and uh, for those who have already been using OKRs, we'll we'll go quickly on this section. Talk about high performing organizations using OKRs, how to launch them, um, and how OKRs make your managers effective. I mean, after all, this webinar is about uh, chief executive officers, but really kind of any C level executives and managers. And uh, if you are a CEO or a senior executive, obviously uh, one of the key levers in your organization um, is the effectiveness of your managers, right? So um, we'll talk about that and, and basically discuss how OKRs make your managers much more effective and much, much more. So let's get going. And by the way, please ask questions along the way. I'll be happy to uh, take a sneak peek at the questions uh, tab here. And uh, if you have any, I'll be happy to answer. I think a lot of you may be asking a question that, that um, recurs frequently, which is, will this uh, slide deck be available later? And we will show you at the end how to uh, get a copy of it. So what are OKRs? So OKRs, or Objectives and Key Results, it's a management approach that's used to align, to focus, to make progress at your company measurable. Um, so that you can achieve the top corporate priorities or objectives, and ultimately to accelerate your business results. And, uh, you know, alignment is, uh, it's a complicated thing, getting everyone on the same page, and then focusing people so they're not diluting their effort, uh, but really focus on what truly matters to your company. That's also very hard. Measuring progress is also hard because a lot of companies – and their managers really just kind of uh, manage by tasks, manage with a lot of activity. Um, you'll see a lot of, even you know, from a technical lens, you'll see a lot of task management tools uh, to track projects and tasks across all kinds of companies. But not enough companies today, not enough CEOs today talk about not tasks, not activity, not being busy, but about actually achieving results, right? So we'll talk about that, and that's what OKRs are all about. So earlier this year, John Doerr launched um, his book, which is a bestseller, uh, New York Times bestseller. It's a bestseller on Amazon called Measure What Matters. And um, he summarizes a lot of the key lessons in this book that he had learned from Intel. And um, when he was at Intel, uh, he worked closely with, uh, with Andy Grove, who's considered one of the best um, technology industry CEOs, but certainly in general CEOs uh, globally. Um, he's passed away, unfortunately, a couple of years ago, but he was really a managerial guru. But um, the original concept of setting objectives as a structured system was defined in the practice of management by Peter Drucker, um, and that was sometime in mid-50s. And um, Andy Grove, when he was using... Uh, the objective system that we know today to be called OKRs, he wrote about it in his book, High Output Management, and he actually called it Intel MBOs. He never referred to it as OKRs. And in the book, Measure What Matters, is where John Doerr actually uh, said that he uh, redefined uh, them as OKRs because Andy Grove called them Intel MBOs. Um, but as you can see, Intel MBOs and therefore OKRs are actually deeply rooted just an MBOs. So for for simplicity's sake, think of OKRs as a as a system for setting up clear objectives and measuring progress based on objectives, not based on just being busy and doing a lot of tasks. That's kind of the big problem today in organizations. Um, Larry Page, one of the co-founders of Google, said, "I wish I had this book 19 years ago when I founded Google." But uh, the reality is, he actually sort of, kind of uh, ish. Uh, did <laughs> 19, 20 years ago, because John Doerr talks about the story, uh, you know, when they were in the uh, in this room and a bunch of them got together, the early team at, at Google, 
Uh, and I think it was a room where he said they had the ping pong table or the billiard table. And uh, so he kind of did get uh, the best uh, OKR introduction from John Doerr directly. And uh, this book and the concept, um, they're really popular. I mean, you have Reid Hoffman, who, who founded LinkedIn, talk about it. You have Bill Gates write about it. I mean, it's a really meaningful thing. And actually, if you if you read the book and you watch uh, John Doerr's uh, TED uh, conference presentation, uh, on that presentation, he even has Bono of uh, U2 talk about using OKRs, which is pretty fantastic if you're a U2 fan. Um, so also, Google's former um, senior executive who ran uh, their whole people operations, which is kind of HR uh, globally, uh, he wrote about uh, using OKRs in this book called Work Rules, which is a fantastic book about um, how they did things at Google. The Google video itself about OKRs is 80 something minutes long. It has over 600, well over 600,000 views already in the past like four years. It's pretty amazing. And uh, John Doerr, so we talked about sort of the, the, the definition of OKRs um, in a very kind of uh, applicable practical perspective, talked about its popularity uh, in John Doerr's book. Um, but also, let's talk about how John Doerr defined sort of OKRs and, and what they benefit, um, you know, for every organization, you know, for profit, nonprofit, etc. But he said there are four superpowers that you actually get uh, from using OKRs. And uh, one of them is focus. We talked about that, right? Getting everyone truly focused on what really, truly matters for your organization. Um, and it's amazing how it does it. When you set objectives for people, that focus is, is truly intrinsic. It's, it's powerful. Another one is alignment. You're getting everybody on the same page and aligned to what really matters, right? Another one is accountability because progress with objectives is now measurable. It's not – you're not telling people go do these tasks. That's not very measurable. I mean, yeah, I mean, they could have accomplished some tasks. But um, are you, you know, doing the right tasks, right? There's a – this uh, this funny um, reference to, to setting objectives and just being busy. Um, and I forgot which book it's from. I, I keep trying to remember. But, you know, they talk about how, you know, if you put, you know, you're trying to paint a wall, but you put a ladder against the wrong wall, um, you may be very good at painting and you're almost done painting, but you just painted the wrong wall. So you need to put that ladder against the right wall. So if you're not setting the objectives correctly, you could be busy and you could be very efficient at your work, but you're not effective because you're not doing the right things that actually matter. You haven't intentionally, mindfully, thoughtfully ruminated on what you need to achieve, what results you need. That's what objectives are. And ultimately, when you can measure that, that's your accountability that you get in the organization. And uh, finally, acceleration. And acceleration comes from setting objectives that are not um, easy. They're not necessarily unachievable. Uh, but they're not easy. And then you can set sort of sometimes aspirational objectives. In rare occasions, you know, real moonshots, right, um, that everybody agrees to are extremely aspirational. And, you know, you're probably not going to hit them at 100% achievement or attainment level, but you're going to, you know, get really far anyway. Um, so that's how you can accelerate results using objectives. Again, you cannot do that just by giving people a lot of, a lot of tasks and, and micromanaging them to just be busy. John Doerr also said that ideas are easy, but it's a, the execution that's everything. And OKRs help every company with better execution. Um, he talked about how everybody does OKRs. And uh, regardless of the company size or its stage, everybody. And let's look at the kinds of companies that use OKRs just to give an idea to those who are not yet using them. Um, it's actually pretty... Uh, pretty diverse set of companies, and here's some more, right? I mean, you have uh, some, you know, U.S. Uh, actually governmental branches, Department of the Navy. Uh, you have a lot of technology companies, consulting companies. Um, you have, you know, beer companies, right? <laughs> there are companies all over, the, you know, retail, they use OKRs. Well, who doesn't, right? I mean, everybody wants to set objectives because how else can you effectively manage your company without... Uh, having clear objectives for your teams. So why do high-performing high organizations use them? So obviously, the performance of your company is directly linked to the performance of your people. 
Um, there are a lot of statistics uh, studied by Harvard, um, you know, PwC, uh, Corporate Executive Board, which is now part of Gartner, about how people uh, at your company, on average, 95% of, of your employees actually don't understand what their uh, what the company's objectives are, and and neither do they understand their own clear objectives because their managers haven't communicated that, and that's a problem. And we'll talk about OKRs and managers later in this presentation, but um, you know you have a ton of research out there stating that you know your companies are not productive, your people are not productive because objectives are not being clearly set. So why do leading CEOs use OKRs? First of all, it's clear communication of top organizational strategic goals. How else do you do it, right? Like you, you have to communicate it through objectives, not just talk about it because people will forget. Um, you connect everyone's own goals to the company's top goals, um, which creates alignment. Uh, it increases focus on the few priorities that truly matter. Um, if you don't actually uh, explicitly state them or if people don't write them down, they're, they're not really... Um, they're not focused on, on what truly matters, right? They're by design not focused on those because you didn't write them down. You also get um, agility because OKRs, uh, part of the criteria of using OKRs is frequent progress check-ins, not like once a year, right? Which is old school goals, like, hey, here are your goals for the year. Um, and we'll talk about it in December or next January. Well, that doesn't make sense. How many companies you know, can wait an entire year to check on objectives and, and course correct, right? Um, that doesn't make sense at all. Um, and by the way, a lot of the old school goals were primarily used for compliance purposes, but not for organizational um, purposes or operational excellence. Obviously, alignment, as we talked about, increasing transparency, accountability, and engagement uh, of your people. Uh, John Doerr wrote in his book, a two-year Deloitte study found that no single factor has more impact than clearly defined goals that are written down and shared freely. Goals create alignment, clarity, and job satisfaction. Um, that's amazing, right? That's a Deloitte study. That's just, that's not us or somebody else um, say, stating it, right? It's, it's real data. Google talks about it, right? They have a whole website dedicated to summarizing how they did OKRs called Rework. By Google, it's a guide set goals with OKRs, right? They say that research shows that performance is higher when people are committed to their goals. Gallup, uh, that studies these kinds of things, they say, do employees really know what's expected of them? And uh, setting expectation right here is a fundamental element of employee engagement. Most employees are very unclear what's actually expected of them. And it's not just being told or micromanaged about what their expectations are, but setting clear objectives right, and measuring progress towards objectives. Yet, um, we talked about all these sort of pains with your employees and, and workforce, yet the total cost of your workforce is 70% of what you uh, spend every year, right? This is real data. So that, you know, for every, you know, $10 million or $100 million, I guess, you know, $70 million is spent on your people. Are your people clear on uh, their objectives? So, that's where OKRs help. So how do we launch OKRs easily and successfully? Well, first of all, it's a simple goal setting approach. Um, just because it's an acronym that, that's kind of newish <laughs> to folks, it doesn't mean that it's not simple. It's simple to learn. It's, you know, it's all about regular progress check-ins and you set it quarterly, not annually. Uh, and by the way, you set objectives quarterly. You don't really want to set objectives every month because you got to think about it. You got to invest the time, but you check in on them more regularly than quarterly. The objective is quarterly, but you can check in on it weekly. You divide a quarter into 12. Actually, to be more pedantic and academic about it, you know, quarters are uh, 13 weeks, if you will. But let's make it simple, like, you know, 12 weeks, right? Like, set your, you know, objectives once a quarter, check in on them, you know, one-twelfth of the time, right? Every week, five minutes. Five minutes every five days, five working days. Very simple, five for five. Um, Luke Gerstner, who was a famous CEO, he ran uh, IBM. He turned IBM around. This must have been like 20 years ago or so. Um, and he also ran RJR Nabisco. And uh, he said, never mistake activity with results. This is what we were talking about. OKRs are objectives. They're about results. And we'll define that more um, in a more disciplined manner um, in a couple of slides. Uh, 
you know, to discern objectives from tests and projects, because a lot of folks uh, always ask about that. Um, you know, also not to beat a dead horse here, but John Wooden, who's, you know, obviously sitting here on the left and his book is here on the right amongst, you know, Stephen Covey and Jim Collins and Jack Walsh, you know, John Wooden, you know, he's very well known as, um, you know, one of the top basketball coaches in the world. Um, and look at all the trophies he got. He sort of kind of knows what he's talking about, right? <laughs> so he says, don't confuse activity with achievement. Same thing, results, achievement. And that's a segue into what objectives are. Um, so objectives here at the bottom, they're all about results. It's about stating what result you want to achieve. They're not about activities. They're not about being a busy bee, right? However, a task is like a single thing that you do. Um, one person can do a task. A task is activity focused. It's all about being busy, right? Doing an activity. A project similarly is like a superset of a bunch of different tasks. And it could be a project could be done by multiple people, right? On a team. A project is also about activities, right? It's, it's something that you do. But ultimately, a goal is something that you want to achieve, right? And the, the magic here is in the way you word it and the way that you um, put measurement into your uh, wordsmithing of your goal. And uh, you'll accomplish a lot of projects and a heck of a lot of tasks, but ultimately, you're doing those activities to achieve an end result, an outcome, a desired future state. Right, that will be a goal. So hopefully that makes it clear. Now, let's talk about CEOs implementing goals, but like how do you come up with goals? Well, first of all, you need to do your strategic planning. It doesn't have to be overcomplicated. Here's a simple system I basically invented, came up with, if you will, I didn't patent it, but I just read a ton of books on strategy over the past 20 years and just came up with a simplified way of suggesting that, you know, if you want to come up with a clear set of strategic priorities and then root your goals in that or, or kind of tease your goals out of your strategic priorities. Look, I mean, you got to have your mission, what you are today. You got to have your 10-year vision. Sometimes people refer to it as the big, hairy, audacious goal. That's the Jim Collins term, BAG, uh, from good to great. Uh, 10 years from now, you, you don't really know what you, you're not going to set goals for 10 years from now. Your goals are going to be like this year and, and each quarter this year. But it's, you know, this year is going to be the first step out of the 10-year steps um, towards, you know, your big vision where you wish you want to be. Um, and uh, your, you know, your core value is basically a recipe for what you value in the organization and in people and how you operate in order for you to achieve your goals in that 10-year vision. The unique value proposition, the differentiation, um, core competencies, these are all critical components of your business and operations uh, because your business is heavily dependent on customers. It's the way you service and provide value to your customers, right? And ultimately, the way you do that helps you um, get to where you want to be in 10 years. And then, therefore, you set strategic priorities for the year. Um, you know, what do we need to do to make that first uh, one-tenth step towards that vision? And your strategic priorities are, therefore, the foundation for your top corporate objectives. By the way, you'll have objectives at the top level of the organization. Each department will have its own objectives that align to the top, and I'll show you how that looks visually. Um, I also um, want to share that you'll have, you know, sub departments or teams or you know business units, and uh, and even sometimes individual objectives uh, in the first couple of quarters of implementing OKRs. Although we recommend to do at least like two or three quarters of just the executive team and senior management, but not necessarily every individual in the company. So, but you get those top organizational OKRs by first, you know, you're kind of teasing them out of your strategic priorities. And I'll show you that as well. Um, so Greg is asking a question. I want to pause for just a second. Will there be a software demo? So this is actually not a, a um, promotional or software demo um, this is mostly an educational webinar. We'll have a couple of screenshots from our software just to demonstrate uh, the points of goal alignment and how to visualize goals when they're aligned, uh, kind of the goal hierarchy. Uh, but if you want to get a software demo, I will give you a, an email at the end of this presentation. In fact, I can tell you now it's C demo, uh, S E E demo, if you want to see it, uh, at ATIM.com, A T I A M. But 
we can wait till the end and we'll spell it out as well. Um, so look, I mean, these are, you know, you can use the, the strategic maps, uh, figure out where your strategic priorities are, and then each one of those strategic priorities gives rise to a top corporate objective, OKR. You know, the first one being here, by the way, these are screenshots out of our product, you know, obviously uh, demo data, you know, grow the business would be linked to the strategic priority of business growth and delighting customers would be linked to the strategic priority of customer focus. You see how this works now, right? It's simple. Um, this is what, you know, in our product, the goal visualization looks like. Again, it's not necessarily about our product, but if you're interested in the product, you should definitely get a demo. It's, it's amazing. Uh, but hey, I'm biased, right? But um you, you can visualize how these goals are interconnected in a line. This is goal alignment hierarchy. It's called visual goal alignment chart. And by the way, this doesn't necessarily mean that uh, these uh, goals are owned by people who are directly in the managerial or organizational chart of the person above or to whom they uh, have this goal aligned. So these aren't people. These are actually goals. And you could have cross-functional alignment from one department or business unit to another, right? That That's what you know, gets rid of corporate silos. So this is a little bit different than a than an org chart. We also have an org chart in our product as well. But this is a goal chart. Very different view, very new, um, very new kind of thing, model, because goal alignment charts did not exist, you know, just a couple of years ago. Um, and we we're kind of one of the inventors and evangelists in the OKR space. So there, therefore, we have it. This is kind of how you do the annual um, cadence, right? You know, you have the annual goal for 2019. Then you have the quarterly, um, qu you know, quarterly are objective. You know, goal is typically like more broader. It's annual, three years, five years. Uh, objective is more quarterly, real time, and measurable. And uh, key results under that. But, you know, projects fall under achieving your key result. And tasks fall into projects. You know, they're not the same as key results or objectives. Uh, Andy Grove wrote, wrote in his book that we must realize that if we try to focus on everything, we focus on nothing. So having just, you know, three, four, or five objectives or OKRs at any given level, top corporate level or departmental or business unit level or team level, you don't want to have more than like three, four, or five, right? Because again, if you're focusing on everything, you'll focus on nothing. And oh, by the way, people frequently ask, well, how do you come up with those goals? Well, um, you know, the question to ask is, what's truly most important in your organization? What are the few things that absolutely must get done, come hell or high water, no matter what, like those must absolutely get accomplished. Those are your goals. Another way to think about it is if you read the book Four Disciplines of Execution, one of the things I liked how they said it um, about what they called wildly important goals, WIGs, it's like OKRs, right? It's, it's really all just objectives. MBO is the same thing. Um, they said, you know, if you do the couple, those couple of wildly important goals or OKRs in our uh, taxonomy, then it makes everything else easier, right? So, like, these are the truly most important things and those that if you were to accomplish and attain and achieve, right, everything else can become so much easier to do at your company. Think of it that way. Um, Andy Grove also said the key is to set and check in frequently. Right, so if you're um, if you have quarterly goals and you're checking in on them only like once a month, you only have two opportunities in a quarter to course correct. You know, first month, second month. By the time you're doing it, the third month you're doing it probably right after the quarter is over. So there's nothing you can course correct at that point. Um, that's not enough touch points, right? A lot of times um, you want more frequent. And and by the way, the check in is is just like five minutes. It, it's nothing, right? And I'll show you a, a cadence in a couple of slides. Um, by the way, you know, majority of your employees actually prefer that managers do these regular check-ins on progress with them every week, right? Just it's just a couple of minutes a week. It's nothing, um, but the impact of that is significant. It really uh, empowers your employees and improves um, execution and, and ultimately performance and results at your organization. Um, Gallup also did a study and they talk about, you know, kind of doing uh, goals with check-ins. This is what John Doerr refers to in his book as CFRs, conversations, feedback, and uh, recognition. That's, you know, um, basically critical check-ins to make sure that everyone is on target. And if not, how do we help them as managers 
to um, effectively achieve those necessary objectives. So how do these check-ins work? Like I said, five minutes every five days. It's nothing. If you or your, your team, your company, if you're not doing this, um, I highly recommend it. It, it takes – you know, in a, in a 40 to whatever, you know, however long your, your hardworking team works, uh, 40 plus hours, uh, at least, right? Just to take five minutes for each employee, it's, it's a huge return on investment. It's a huge, hugely impactful thing to do. Just check in on how things are going. It's like nothing. And our product, by the way, automates it and makes it easy with notifications. It's, it's fantastic. It saves a ton of headache and, and time, et cetera. Uh, but even if you don't use a product like ours, you can just uh, meet with people or, or have emails. I mean, again, nobody wants more emails, but that's what our product is for. But but then again, if you don't use it, just do it. it it's it's just a couple of minutes uh, every week. And you you know some you know some people don't want to do it every week. Some companies you know we have some bigger customers, large public company. They will want to do it like every two weeks or every four weeks. Okay, that's fine. We're not going to debate that, but we do highly recommend every week. It's it's really you know if you're a manager and you're not taking at least five minutes per direct report on your team who reports to you, um, you're not taking five minutes a week to check in on their progress. Well, geez, I mean that's really the key part of being a manager, right? Um, this is also like another screenshot again, not meant to be about our product uh, or a demo necessarily, but you know, it just exhibits like the data-driven approach to managing people. You know, are you starting your meetings? By checking in on the OKR or on the, on the progress of objectives, right? Or are your meetings just just very kind of plain vanilla, without actually focusing on what truly matters, which is what objectives are. Um, with objectives, you identify progress uh, early in problems as well. So when you um, get stuck somewhere, you can see it measurably, right? In our product, you have uh, these charts that are uh, that show like red when employees check in on this, you know, every you know every Friday for five minutes. Or whenever you want them to, you can configure it. Um, if they're behind on a measurable objective, you can see it in the dashboard. It'll alert you. You can see what goals are at risk. And you can have a conversation to help your employees, right? It's amazing. You, you're helping people succeed at work. That's what every manager should be doing. Um, Cross-functional alignment, right? It reduces silos, uh, improves collaboration across the company. It's great. Um, that's, you know, in our product, you can do that with praises on, on objectives where there's cross-functional alignment or you know, teams are collaborating. Um, you can gently nudge when the progress is a little bit behind. Don't over nudge people because it'll be less gentle. But uh, you know, you can see that here. Um, you know, you have these dashboards that you know you can do. Um, we have we call it the Explorer, where you can quickly identify uh, objectives throughout the organization. As the CEO, which ones are in the yellow, which is a little behind, which ones are in the red who's the owner of any of these objectives, what, um, you know, what do we do to help them achieve those objectives, etc. cetera. Uh, again, goal alignment chart, I've showed you a little bit this kind of how it looks like uh, from the perspective of aligning objectives without necessarily being in the hierarchy. The three keys to success when CEOs implement objective systems like OKRs is, is first of all, discretion. Um, second of all, common sense, right? There's a famous phrase, uh, from a French philosopher, uh, Sartre, is that common sense is not so common, <laughs> and I'm sure, I'm sure you can agree with that. Every day, right, you're you're seeing people not exhibiting common sense. But when you're implementing objectives, let's not overcomplicate things. Let's just use common sense. What works, what doesn't, and let's keep it simple, right? Um, and on on the concept of keeping it simple, you know, walk before you run, right? You don't, you know, a lot of folks try to make, you know. Distribute OKRs throughout the entire organization, like thousand people. No, just start with you know just the executive team and the senior managers and general managers or middle managers below them, right? Take it easy. Walk before you run. Uh, you know, start light. Um, you know, don't don't overcomplicate things. And finally, on don't overcomplicate things is don't force a square peg into a round hole, right? Um, there's a whole science to how you wordsmith and write down and articulate your your objectives, how you measure them. It takes some time, right? But don't force measurement. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, somebody recently asked someone in our organization, they're on the design team at a, at a technology company, and they asked, how do you, um, you know, how do you set, you know, measurable objectives for designers, right? 
Well, I mean, first of all, we, we discerned that, you know, um, quantifying and, and making an objective measurable, they're not exactly the same. Quantifying is putting an actual number on it, but even if it's a milestone, such as, you know, complete uh, this new um, framework or, or, you know, launch this event, they don't have any numbers, so there's no quantification, but it is still measurable. You can measure if you completed it or not. It's imperfect. Of course, ideally, a lot of uh, executives will want to see some some quantification of metrics. But you know what? Even if you start out light, you know, even if you don't have a, you know, a number, but you, you're making it measurable, that's fine. Just, you know, walk before you run and, and don't overcomplicate it. Um, so let's talk about managers and sort of managers being one of the key levers for every CEO and company uh, to make your company progress uh, more effective. So what are, you know, this is from Harvard Business Review. What, what are employees complaining about the most? And uh, there's another actually a slide to this about what managers agree is the biggest issue with them managing people. And it's really funny, I should have probably included this, but um, it's almost like a, a, a mirror of this, right? Like the, the managers anonymously were, you know, polled for this research and they agreed to a lot of this uh, anonymously. <laughs> but but they all agree that, um, you know, at the very top, the, you know, there's not enough recognition for people's achievement. That's well known. Uh, but the second one is the most impactful one and most relevant to the OKR conversation. You know, employees are not getting clear objectives. They're not getting clear direction. They're just being told sort of what tasks to work on or projects, but they're not giving, uh, they're not being given clear objectives that they can measurably achieve. And that's a real shame, uh, which is kind of sort of called mismanagement. And the, on the mismanagement note, Google, uh, some years ago, I think this was like 15 years ago, um, or 10 years ago, they, they had this, they, this, this kind of like internal kind of hypothesis, like, what if you were to like get rid of all the managers? Like, do people like even need managers? Like, for example, engineers, do they really need to be managed? Like, can we just like give them, you know, what, you know, what software we need to write or what algorithms and just have them do it? Like, why do they need to waste their time on, you know, being managed uh, and, and spend time with, their, with some managers? So they ran this, uh, you know, project called Project Oxygen. It was actually really well documented and you can buy the actual case study uh, from Harvard Business Review for, for 14 bucks, or I can summarize, you know, the highest takeaways for you. Um, so Inc. published this. Um, they talked about how lessons from Google's failed quest to run a business without managers. Are managers necessary? Well, Google got rid of managers and in the process found out what matters most. By the way, I'll tell you in a second how they got rid of managers because you're probably wondering, like, how that how is that even possible? Did they literally fire all the managers or told them not to come in to work for like, you know, a month, like what happened? So I'll, I'll share it with you. Uh, Google obviously is a very analytical data-driven organization, so, so they knew what they were doing. Um, so they ran this experiment, right? Um, Google's quest to build a better boss, right? So um, in 2009, uh, statisticians inside Googleplex uh, embarked on a plan code named Project Oxygen, devised something far more important to the future of Google uh, then, then it's next search algorithm. They wanted to build better bosses. Um, so here they say, you know, on Google's own website rework, I told you about it earlier where they discuss OKRs uh, in detail. Um, the Google said, you know, in 2002, um, so by the way, it was in 2002, then 2009, according to here. And then recently, again, they reran it and updated it, but, um, they haven't always a, a properly appreciated management, they ran an uncontrolled experiment by simply getting rid of all managers, right? So it was an experiment, it was uncontrolled, and it didn't go well. In 2008, the team of researchers set out to prove that some at Google suspected that managers don't matter, but very quickly the team discovered quite the opposite. Managers matter a lot. Um, you know, and they say here, managers manage, manage, matter a lot and can have a huge impact on employee performance uh, performance and achieving results, right? Um, so what really happened is that Google came to a conclusion, you know, research shows that managers matter. This is really from Google. Well, it's good to know, right? I'm a professional manager, right? 
Uh, they can have a significant impact on the business outcomes and employee engagement, but many organizations do not adequately select or develop their managers and miss a great opportunity for business advancement. So what did Google decide really matters to being a good manager? Uh, these are some of the relevant takeaways. There, there are a couple more, but the ones that I um, mentioned here are the ones that are related specifically to, to setting objectives. Look, clear strategy for the team. That's all about objectives, right? Converting strategy into objectives that are measurable. Uh, good communicator. They communicate on the progress regularly. They don't micromanage, right? They don't throw a lot of tasks at you into Trello. They set clear objectives and measure progress and objectives once a week. They don't come in every day and just micromanage you task by task by task. They discuss performance, right? So when you don't have objectives, what kind of performance can you possibly be discussing, right? And I'm sort of asking that in you know tongue in cheek, somewhat facetiously, like. You know, if you just tell people go do these things, what, what does performance mean in that context, right? You can see if they did that thing or they did or didn't do it or whatever, and you can sort of critique their, you know, quality or or check their spelling or grammar or maybe look at the colors on the PowerPoint. But that's not performance, right? Performance can only be uh, with respect to objectives, right? Um, results oriented, again, goals. Remember we talked earlier how they're different from tasks or projects. Goals are about endpoint outcome, results. Tasks are about doing something. It's activity. Projects are about activity. So results-oriented means by design that you're focused on objectives. Finally, good coach, right? So basically, when you have objectives, you coach people and you help them to achieve those objectives. You're coaching them. By the way, Gallup um, and, you know, the folks who were at Gallup, they wrote this book, 12 Elements of Great Managing, fantastic book. But very similarly, a lot of sort of overlapping takeaways, right? Similarities. Connect the job to the organization's mission, right? That's objectives that connect to the top organization goals in the most practical ways. Set clear direction. What is expected? That's goals. That's not tasks. Discuss progress again, of course. Recognition for good work, right? Um, this is kind of good communication means as a manager, you're recognizing people for the work that they're doing so that it reinforces that. Enables learning and growth. You can learn when you have objectives and you learn how to achieve them or what you learn from not achieving them and, and kind of apply that next time around. Um, McKinsey, right? Well-known, you know, consulting firm globally. Uh, they wrote this paper, Decoding Leadership, What Truly Matters. Well, it's clarifying objectives, developing others, coaching, right? Coaching them and developing through setting objectives and seeing measurably how they're performing, not subjectively, but objectively, not, not arbitrarily, but based on real performance of objectives. Um, giving praise, recognition on the progress of objectives. You can't, I mean, you can give praise when somebody does a nice PowerPoint or sends, you know, an email without grammatical mistakes, right? But that's not really praise on, on actual progress towards objectives. That is the most... Uh, effective praise there is because um, it's it's substantive, it's tangible, right? Um, and then strong results orientation. Again, goals are all about results. Tasks and projects are not about results, they're about activities. Before we go to the next one, we have a question here. On the subject of managers being needed or not, there's also the ill-fated experiment with holacracy. Um, yeah, I mean, we're not, that's outside of the uh, scope here. Um, you know, sure, um, you know, holacracy uh, has its merits in some unique cultures, uh, but yeah, it's very difficult with holacracy, you know, in true form, it's, you know, people without management, um, you know, we're human, I think it's been proven that managers do matter, at the very least by Google, <laughs> and I trust Google. Um, so what are the consistent and repeatable steps of effective managers? It's kind of this. Um, set clear direction and use OKRs is the most effective uh, goal setting methodology in a business organization or, or really just any organization. Um, you know, it starts with objectives, then you progress check-ins, then provide feedback. And by the way, remember John Doerr's um, concepts on CFRs, conversations, feedback, recognition, check-in, that's a conversation about progress. You provide feedback uh, and recognition as the coaching part that Google and McKinsey, um, they talk about. And at the end of the year, these review snapshots that summarize everything more formally, but it's these first four components that, that are critical for every manager to be a good manager, to be an effective manager. As Jack Welsh said, before you are a leader, success is all about growing yourself. 
When you become a leader, success is all about growing others. You grow others by being a good, effective manager, which is what we just talked about. And the critical component of that is, first and foremost, setting objective. In fact, uh, last few things on that. So Deloitte earlier this year, this is 2018, released a, a global research uh, on global human capital trends. Human capital, hu HR, it's all about people, people in the organization. The trends are, number one, you know, connecting strategy and execution and day-to-day -day work, right? It's OKRs, OKR goal setting. This is not just for CEOs. This is for HR teams as well, and HR helps implement uh, best practices and methodologies as well as technologies and tools like our software for these kinds of things, specifically for people, for people operations, improving performance with your people, improving culture, engagement, employee engagement, um, and ultimately results and, and adding value through people to the organization. And it's all about OKRs being the first thing. This is directly a snapshot out of that report. And finally, when it comes to overarchingly managing people's performance, one of the things I always try to uh, emphasize um, as one of the, uh, you know, quick tips and thoughts on this uh, educational webinar is that, uh, you know, a lot of folks think of, of goal setting um, as something that, you know, or, or goals are something that belongs just in HR. And that's a big misconception. So people think that, you know, that's just part of performance management. Um, and that's all HR. So by the way, um, as you can see here, performance management, what is performance management? Well, employee performance management is a set of management practices. By the way, it didn't say HR practices, right? We're not talking about a, an HR-sponsored performance appraisal or performance review. We're talking about performance management. So first and foremost, establishing measurable objectives, right? So that's the first point that's from Burson. Uh, by Deloitte. Um, if you don't have measurable goals or objectives, right, that's not performance management. Not sure what that is, but it's not performance management because that's part of that definition. Um, and then at the end over here, it says most importantly, performance management is management. After all, you are managing people in order to get a level of performance required by your organization, right, for the organization to achieve its top objectives. So whenever anyone thinks of uh, goals is just being some part of performance management, which is an HR uh, concept. This slide is meant to um, clarify that that's completely not the case. Performance management is management. That's what managers do. The very first critical uh, part of performance management is setting objectives. You can't manage people effectively or be an effective manager without setting objectives. If you are a CEO and your managers are not doing it, this is the first thing that you can sort of as a as a light switch, just flip it and things will um, over a couple of quarters become significantly better. It's, it's a known fact, it's researched. Uh, there's a ton of data on it. A lot of it is in this presentation alone. Um, and uh, it's not an HR thing, right? Objectives are all about operations. It's operational excellence creating a clarity, focus, alignment that helps your organization grow. So um, with that said, I think that's pretty much it. And I can give, you know, 15 minutes back to your day. Um, if there are more questions, please post them. I'd like to help you ask me hard questions. Um, in the meantime, I want to offer some free gifts. This is the, the time to, to do some marketing uh, on the company's behalf. And uh, uh, if you sign up for a free live demo, and I think, um, Greg uh, asked earlier about a demo. Uh, just email us at cdemo at a team. Uh, someone um, on the sales team will get back to you. Yes, sales team. They're not going to try to push you to buy anything, but that's that's the team that helps you know schedule a demo and help answer your questions. And and our sales team operates sort of in best practices mode, meaning they they're, they don't force people to do anything. They're they're not going to bother you. They're just trying to be helpful. Um, they're kind of under the always be helpful. Uh, motto. Um, and, you know, with that, you'll also get a, you know, you can sign up for a free OKR consultation, summary of John Doerr's book, Measure What Matters, to which we refer to here, frequent, you know, frequently in this webinar, uh, customer case studies, or even the slide deck, you can get all of the above uh, when you sign up for a demo. Um, so that's pretty much the end of the webinar. I'm happy to give you, uh, what is it, exactly 15 minutes back to your day. I think some of you will appreciate it. But if anyone has any questions, I'll, I'll be here for another minute to see if you post anything. 
Um, although right now it looks totally quiet. Crickets. No questions and OKRs. Great. <laughs> I hope I hope it's because I made it clear uh, and not uh, bored you to death. Thank you all so much. And uh, yeah, if you have any other questions, email us. In the meantime, have a wonderful day. Bye.